Hello and welcome to today's video where we'll talk about sockets in Android Studio. And this part one will be a very simple client application example. We're going to get some time from a server and display it for the user. And in the second part of the video, which is going to be the second video, actually, we will talk about client and server application and the communication between them. But again, it's going to be a simple example as we try to keep everything as easy as possible. So this I already explained what we do today, this simple NIST time, so National Institute of Standards and Technology. And then we have this simple client server communication in the second video. This is what we'll do today. The user interface is very simple. We have only a text view and a button. When we press the button, the time and the date will be displayed on the screen. And this time and date is received from a server. And that's all we have to do in this very first simple example. And I'm sure by the end of it, you will understand it and you'll be able to implement it in your own code. Okay, so let's go to Android Studio and see how it's done. You will start by opening Android Studio and you will create a new project, an empty activity project, which will be designed to run on phones and tablets. Once the project is loaded completely, you should see something like this on the screen with the project folder on the left side. And in the middle over here, you have two files, the main activity Java file containing the code and the activity main XML from the user interface. And well, of course you can see the code here as well, but I usually work in design mode. Speaking of design, let's create the user interface, which has a very simple design. You have this text view, we will give it an ID, we'll say text view time. We will need this to refer it later on in the program. For the text, we'll just say system time here, actually server time. Okay, then you search for the size attribute and you increase the size to 34, for example, so it's easily read. And that should be everything that you need to do for the text view. Then you take a button, you drag and drop. It. Because this is a constraint layout, you need to set some horizontal constraints and then at least one vertical constraint. Because we have this size already selected in the attributes, we'll just increase the size to 24. I think this is enough. And because we don't want the button to be so close to the text view, We'll just give it a bit of clearance. Okay. Then the button needs to have an ID as well. We'll give it btn get time. So it says what it does. And for the text of the button, we'll just say get missed time. One more thing for the button, we need to give the name of on click method. So this will be executed when we click on the button and we'll say the method will be called on click get time. Okay, because there is no such method right now, we might get an error, but we'll deal with it in a moment. This is all that we have to do in the user interface. Let's go to the code and let's start with some variables. We do have a text view, so we'll say, actually what I'll do, I'll just write some code and then I'll explain it. This way it's going to be faster. With this application being a client in a client server architecture, we need to contact the server with some information. So when we create the socket, we need this information to connect to the server and the server name, I called it, uh, it's time.needs.government. And this is where you will find the server that will return the time and the port will be 13. So this information you have to know in advance. Basically, every time you connect to a server using the sockets, you will need to know the address and the port number of the server. Otherwise you can't connect if you don't know where to look for, uh, for the server. So you need to know where it is. Next, we need to prepare a inner class that will handle this connection to the server and return the name and we'll say something like this 
private class and we'll just give it a uh, name that will indicate what it does. So this will be NIST time client. And this will implement runnable. And of course we get this error message because we need to implement here, you select implement method and we need to implement the run method. The code is generated automatically. Okay, and what we'll need inside this class, because we will receive a string and an integer, the server name and the server port, we'll say something like this, private string, server name, and private integer server port. And with this information, we'll create a constructor for this class. You right click, you go to generate constructor and you select both the server name and the server port and you select okay. And you have the constructor already generated. So less code for you to write. Let's move to the run method and uh, I'll just write it faster this time and explain it. What I've done until this point, I've just created a socket because as I told you before, in order for the client to connect to the server, you need to create a socket that will carry the server name and server port. And then once connected to the server, you will automatically receive the time. However, for you to handle this information, you need to implement a buffer reader. And I, I just called it BR because buffer reader is going to be too long and it gets a bit confusing. So I just said BR, this is the buffer reader, and this will need an input stream reader. And this input stream reader will need to know which is the input stream that will read. So which is the source of the information. And this is going to be the socket carrying the input stream. So this is why you get this method, get input stream from the socket, which is going to be handled by the input stream reader and passed to the buffered reader. Now the buffer reader has a method that allows you to easily read the, con the information that you receive. For example, the read line. There are other read methods, but this is what we use right now. Uh, what I know is that the first line that we receive is going to be empty. So this is why I read first line and I do nothing with it. So just to pass over this first empty line. And then the second time I read the line, this will contain the information I need, the time and the date. So I have a new string, received time, and this will uh, receive the information that is read. And from that string, which is read, we subtract sorry for this popping up, uh, we only get a part of the string from index six to index 23. I mean, this, you don't have to learn by heart or anything like this. If you just eliminate this part, you will get a long string with a, a lot of information. However, the time and the date is just between these two positions. So this is what I've done here just to have a cleaner uh, output. I just taken from the input string the positions six to 23. So only the information I needed. Then I close the socket. Now, this is all good and well. However, what's missing is the way to display the information to the user. And for this, we'll just need to add a bit of code that will run on the user interface. And for this, I find the easiest way to do is run on user interface thread. And this will be a new runnable. Okay, we just leave the code to be generated automatically. And inside here, we just reference the text view time. So this is our text view on the user interface. And then we just say set text, a sequence of character, and we pass this string, the received time. And we can save everything, obviously we still have to implement one method and the method is the one executed when we click on the button because right now we only have this class that will connect to the server and get the time. However, and of course, try to display it here, but we need to execute this when we press the button. And for this, we need to have the method, the on click get time method that we have declared in the user interface over here on click. 
this will execute. Okay, so just let's just write the method. What I've done in this short method is just to reference the text view, this text view time, and uh, we find it by ID. And this is actually has the same name as uh, the object, the view in the user interface. And then I have a runnable, which encapsulates the code, if you want, from this class over here and uses the server name and the server port that we have declared above. And using these two parameters and the code, contained in this class, we just create a new thread and sorry, a new thread and executed and let's see how it looks. The application has loaded and we can test it now. As you can see, we have the initial text server time here. And when I press the button, we should receive the server time and it's going to display only the time and the date. And our application has just crashed. Actually, I'm very happy that it did because I forgot to do something and maybe a lot of you will do the same. So let's just close the app and I'll show you what I forgot. I don't even need to look in the error to see over here what was the error. Actually, it's the internet permission. So I forgot to modify the manifest so as to have the internet permissions. So what you have to do, you just have to go to the app manifest, open the Android manifest, and over here on top, you have to enter some user permission. And this will be something like user permission. And this will be Android dot permission dot internet. Okay, this is it. Okay, with this being done, let's save everything and we'll run the application again. Let's try it this time. Now you can see we have the date and the time displayed and we only have this information. Now, just for you to understand better this example, I can show you what will happen. Let me just minimize. If, for example, where is it? If here, instead of trimming the received information, so let me just comment this one. You can see how it was. Okay, sorry for this. Let me just delete the rest. So let's run it again and see now how it looks. And pressing the get time, you will see the entire string as received. Whereas before it was only this part trimmed over here. Now with this example working and uh, being explained, I hope you have learned something new today. Keep practicing, keep learning. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and take care.